But don't just invest in stocks. Do this instead. Hi, my name is Josh, and Warren Buffett agrees with what I'm about to say. The S&P 500 is one of the greatest ways that you can build wealth, and it can make or break your retirement fund. Warren Buffett says that most people should be invested in the S&P 500. Check this out. The S&P 500 companies have earned well over 10% on equity, often 15% annually for years and years and years and years. They've done it all with Democratic administrations, with Republican administrations. Now, you get money compounding at that kind of rate underlying your investment, and you get a diversified group of that. I mean, you're going to do well. Here's some reasons why the S&P 500 is so powerful. The annualized return is 10% on average with dividends reinvested. And this means that you can double your investment every seven years on average. The S&P 500 consists of the top 500 companies in the United States, and when you bet on the S&P, you're betting on the US economy. Long term, the S&P 500 is incredibly hard to beat, and most active traders cannot beat it over a long period of time. You may have heard somebody referring to a stock as beating the market, and most of the time, they're comparing it to the S&P 500. And those stocks that beat the market usually only do it for short periods of time, but they can't do it over many years in a row. If you're not super familiar with the stock market or investing, I wrote a book that can help you be successful, link in the description below. More often than not, the S&P 500 has had positive returns. You can see here on this chart that from 1926 until now, it's had more green years than red years. Now, past success is not an indicator of future success. However, this stock does have a great track record. Another reason that the S&P 500 is so powerful is because inflation within the United States is currently about 7%. If you just kept your money in a savings account, your buying power would be reduced by 7% every year. Even if you had a high interest savings account, most currently pay about 4% or less, you would still have a negative 3% return. The S&P 500's annualized return of 10% leaves you with a positive 3% return on your money after inflation. The S&P 500 is a much safer investment than individual companies. Individual companies can go out of business and you would lose your money if you were invested in them. The S&P 500 is an exchange traded fund or ETF. And that means that it holds many individual companies. Each quarter, the ETF's managers review the companies within the fund and they choose whether or not to replace them with better performing ones. This means that four times per year, the fund is rebalanced to hold the best stocks that are currently in the market. This also means that the chance of it going bankrupt are basically zero. Also, if we compare the S&P 500 to other countries' markets, you can see that the US stock market does better than most. Check this out. Here you can see some of the various S&P 500 equivalents from around the world. The orange line is the S&P 500. The blue line is the European equivalent. The purple line is Japan's market. The green line is Nigeria's market. And the red line is Indonesia's market. I don't know about you, but my bet's on the US market. However, you might think that the S&P 500 is too expensive to buy, and that's too easy. You can buy other funds that index themselves to the bigger fund. This basically means that whatever the S&P 500 holds, these index funds will hold too, but in less quantities, and that makes them cheaper. There are also different types of emphasis that these index funds can have, and some focus on growth stocks, some focus on value stocks, and others might focus on energy stocks within the S&P 500. What I'm currently doing is focusing a large portion of my portfolio into the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 High Dividend ETF, ticker symbol SPYD, and I'm buying hundreds of shares. This is an S&P that focuses on higher dividend paying companies, and because of that, it pays me more each month. I can almost buy 10 shares of SPYD for the same amount of money invested in one share of the S&P fund. Since I can afford more of these shares compared to SPY, I can also sell covered calls on the shares that I own to generate even more passive income each month. I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice, but watch this video next if you want to learn how to do the same thing with your shares. And if watching this video helped, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content.